What's up YouTube? My name is Paladin and thank you guys for watching another episode of Paladin Projects. This is a series where we go over different champion concepts that I've created for the game League of Legends. Today we're going to be doing a champion known as Elorin, the Childish Genius. Now, before we get into the video, this is, if you guys watched the first Paladin Projects video that I put out, which was Yon, I believe. In that video, I talked about me applying for a position at Riot in 2015-2016 area for champion design. Uh, I gave them the idea for Yon, um, Kai, which was the second video that I put out, and this champion here. So this is, was the, this was the basis that I kind of built my um, my resume off of. Um, obviously, I, I didn't get the job, but this champion here, out of these three, the first three that I made was the most fun for me to make, mainly because the story was so fun to write. And because of that, I wrote, so if, if, if I take you back, I maybe wrote five or six pages for Yone, maybe five or six pages for Kai. And for this champion, I wrote maybe 12 or 18 pages. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And because um, the idea for this, when, when I got the idea for this, this character, everything kind of fell into place and the story kind of paved its, its, its own way. It, it kind of just... The idea just kind of, when I was writing it down, just kept going and going and going, and I couldn't stop. I, I really couldn't stop. So the story became something that's so phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, I'm not actually not going to include it in this video. And actually, I think from now on, I'm not going to include any of the lore in these videos, mainly because it takes maybe 15 minutes, and the videos are hitting about that 30, 40 minute mark, and I, I kind of want to tone it down to maybe under 20. So I'm actually going to create a separate, a separate video for all of the lore for each single champion I, I will release those and we'll just talk about it and I can reveal it to you guys I think that's a little bit better so without further ado we'll start with the um, I would say the lore normally but this is going to be a small just a segment of what the champion is and his ultimate is called now All right, now going into his ultimate, which we guys probably already saw here a little bit, it's called- And I'll go over and explain some things afterwards. Elorin, the childish genius. This quote here at the, very, at the very beginning, a form of this quote happens throughout a lot of his story. So keep this quote in mind. I was, all, I was always going to protect you. Words a young Elorin would remember forever. Moving from his hometown of Ripshin, life would change as he knew it. With Piltover in sight, Elorin and his father would have ventured together forward into a next into a next chapter. However, Vorpal nightmares shrouded this image, reaping everything he knew of life. The sinister man with the yellow eyes took innocence away from him. Before he could re before he could extract the remaining life from the lost boy's heart, a savior appeared. As Elorin peeled back from his arms in defense, the man with the yellow eyes was gone. All that remained was a large, obscure being, machine made. The sentinel figure turned to the young boy, kneeling as close to him as he could get, and said, Elorin, I was made to protect you. So, you guys probably have a ton of questions about what this, you know, what's going on here. Um, without giving too much information, uh, Elorin is a youngest boy, young boy sort of champion. Um, he actually comes from a city known as Ripshin, which does not exist in Runeterra. And the reason for that is I created a um, a different landmass that's on Valoran, which is, I believe, the planet that all this takes place on. Valoran, um, the, uh, this, this different landmass is called Kalavak. Kalavak. Yeah, Kalavak. And this is one of the cities that, that uh, inhabits this landmass. Ripshin is very similar to Piltover. They're both very technologically sound. Um, but for different reasons, which you'll find out in a future video. So Ripshin, um, like I said, it's big. This, this big tech nerdy city. Uh, Elorin and his father are both professors. He's a, he's a professor at like age twelve. He is an extremely intelligent little boy, and him and his father were going to Piltover for sort of a meeting conference about one of his projects, one of his father's projects. Before that could happen. This man, this sinister man with the yellow eyes, ended up taking his father's life. I'm not going to tell you who the sinister man is, but he is a champion in the game. So, because of this, uh, Elorin almost lost his life as well, and then he was saved by his father's project, 
which is this giant mech fighting robot uh, who goes by the name of Sam that was given to him by Eloran. His name actually means, it's actually backwards, it means mechanized assault sentinel, but Eloran gave him, gave him, you know, kind of an acronym name and switched it around, that way it made Sam. It just it was more friendly for him since he's a little kid. Um, so the, their whole story is he's trying to find, basically he heads to Piltover to try to find the whereabouts of his father's killer, try to find out who this person was. Now the champion, he's very, very unique. The only other champion that's very close would be Nar. When you have his little Nar form, which is a completely different set, uh, a completely different playstyle and kit, and then you have Mega Nar, which is more of a, a beefier tank type of champion. This is kind of the same concept with these two. Elorin is a fighting, is he, he's an AP melee champion, very similar to someone like Cassidy or Fizz or Echo. And Sam is a giant beefy robot tank. And I wanted to come up with this boy meets robot bonding friendship sort of concept because it's not in the game. I feel we're, we're they're really missing out on a lot of what this champion can actually be. His kit is a little complicated, so we're going to start with Eloran, who is the character that you play, and then we'll kind of go into what how Sam kind of comes into the picture. So first off, we'll start with his, we'll start with his passive abilities. Passive one is called Honorable Intelligence. Eloran gains slightly extra XP per monster minion kill. So what I was kind of thinking is. When you see the rest of his kit, he does not do a ton of damage in his kit. He's very focused on zoning and poking and just kind of doing some damage and getting out. He does not have a lot of one-shot potential at all. Even if he builds, you know, you know, a death cap and a bunch of other items, he's not going to do, you know, that much damage till later on in the game. So his early game is very, very weak. This kind of gives him some early game ability. Um, so instead of, you know, killing six minions to get level two, he would kill five or four. And this would scale slightly increased during the late game to where he's getting a he's getting a little more xp um obviously once he hits level 18 the ability is no longer useful it's really like i said it's really a early game uh just to just to keep him even early game his second passive is called pure minded every fifth auto attack Eloran restores either 10 12 or 14 percent of his total most missing health um so if he is if he has 500 missing health he would gain 70. it's um very similar to kind of a uh, zareth passive it's just a way to give him some sort of uh, sustain and survivability in lane without making it too over too you know too overtuned uh if, if, if it was like at 20 25 percent which is what i had it earlier it's way too strong or if it's at like you know eight or five it's not really worth doing it at all so there's just a way to keep him in lane now his third passive we'll talk about it slightly and then we're going to go back to it because we need to talk about his q his w and his e before we get into it so this is called uh this passive is called untested projects uh Eloran has three possible untested upgrades to purchase to enhance his abilities. Each upgrade he buys will increase in price. So it's kind of like um, Gangplank passive in a way. Before we go into those, we'll talk about all three abilities and then we'll talk about what the upgraded effects would be. So his Q is Helos Crafted Bow Staff. Uh, Eloran extends his pro his prototype staff in target direction, dealing damage to all enemies in path. Uh, we'll stop at the first enemy champion hit, applying a stack of IQ. So this is kind of the, I guess, the, the generic wave clear slash poking ability. He, he uses a bow staff and a pistol, are his two weapons. So this way he actually will extend his staff, does damage to everybody in the line, first enemy champion hit, adds a stack of IQ. His W is called Karubic Laser Mines. Eloran throws down a mine at a target location, it channels for one second, and then it deploys one laser rotating in a 360 degree angle, dealing magic damage to all enemies. So basically he throws a mine in the middle and then it activates and then it just spins around. It will probably go through three full spins or uh, probably two full spins, level one. Um, that's probably how long it would last and then it would go away. Um, if this if if dealt laser damage for for more than three seconds the enemy will be slowed and if they have a IQ stack on them it will consume the stack and it will start to shred their magic resist for one to three seconds up to 15 percent magic resist shred pretty strong ability however you can walk around it you can walk kind of in the same area played Mario the little laser the the little lava things that go around on Mario 64 on that whatever the lava world was I can't remember going into his third ability here it's called evasive side shot he dodges to the side very similar to Riven's uh, E 
kind of how it has a quick cast effect. Uh, shooting the closest target, it prioritizes enemy champions, enemy champions who have IQ stacks, and then enemy champions who have IQ stacks, or enemy champions who have the least amount of health. If it does consume a stack, it will daze the target, basically a stun. Before we go into the ultimate here, I talk about oops, talk about the, what the actual upgrades would be. So for the Q, it would have longer range. I was thinking the ability itself would maybe be like a 300, 350, you know, pixel range and this would add, this would add a 150 range to it just making it just a little a little bit more acceptable for poking those backline champions like Zara like Ezreal not Ezreal um Azir and Ezreal I guess you could say his his W would add a second laser to it so you you, you have a laser at each 100 180 degrees on uh, both of those would spin just make it harder to get around people does more damage and then his E would be able to shoot two targets instead of one dealing the same amount of damage so you're not losing any damage there you're just able to hit two people at once all right now going into his ultimate which we guys probably already saw here a little bit it's called Engage Sam. So Elerin calls down his mechanized assault sentinel or Sam. Um, once it lands, Elerin can enter Sam's cockpit to engage combat protocol. This will allow him to gain extra HP as well as armor and as well as new abilities. So like I said, a little bit like Meganar, this ability will last pending on the next ability, which would be his actual ultimate passive, and he has two of them. The first one is called Etho Core Capacitor. All abilities slowly drains Sam's Etho Core of energy. The Etho Core scales with levels. Once the core reaches 35%, around the 35% mark, his next two abilities will have uh, will have longer, will have much longer cooldowns. And then once he hits under 25%, he can no longer use abilities except for his Q and his special ultimate, will, which is called uh, Emergency Ejection or EE, will become active. We'll talk about that in a little bit. His second passive is called Flawless Ro Robotics. When emergency ejection is proc, Elerin has to collect parts of Sam to reduce cooldown of ability. There's four parts to collect. One part equals 15% cooldown reduction off of the ultimate. So once the ultimate's done, you can go back to basically picking up the parts of Sam and you'll gain a cooldown reduction for them. The parts will probably be spread to each quadrant of the map. You have to go just, just go pick it up, channel it, kind of like a Skarner Spire. But this here, so his, 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 Sam, his, his ultimate basically works off of a energy-based system that does not regenerate. It, it will probably start around 2,000, 3,000, and it slowly goes down, even if you're not using abilities. If you're not using abilities and you're just walking around, just auto-attacking, you can probably last in there about a minute, maybe a minute, 10 seconds. If you're using abilities, you're probably going to last between 20 and 30 seconds at the very most. We'll go here into his, his Q. It's called a uh, Vulcanite Gatling Cannons. Just two giant cannons that are mounted on Sam's shoulders will start the fire. He deals damage in a V shape. He is the point of the V, one to the left, one to the right, just kind of starts by him and just kind of makes their way out. Does damage to everybody in that area. His W is called Unbalanced Alloy Tracer, which fires a medium ranged energy orb, dealing magic damage to targets it passes through. And then you can also reactivate it um, to stop it in its tracks and pull targets inward. This is very similar to Arissa from Overwatch and how her, um, her little gravity ball works. Um, I really like the idea of like, okay, this this actually would fit into his kid a little bit. That way he doesn't have, you know, a ton of damage, which is what I previously had on his kid. He was way, way too overtuned when I first started making this champion. So that's his W. His E, I had a lot of trouble making. It was a missile strike sort of ability at first, but when you see his ultimate, I, I was kind of thinking about it. I'm like, that's a little too much damage. So I wanted to give him some more utility. Uh, this is called high velocity charge. So Sam supercharges his bios, gaining faster cooldowns on on his Q and his W. During the stasis, he also charges minions and allies around him, slightly increasing their, their resistances, more so for minions. So they would gain a little bit of armor, a little bit of magic resist if they're a champion. For minions, it's almost like they're Baron buffed. Your minions will actually be a lot stronger when you're by them. You can actually split push or maybe stop a certain way from pushing and kind of slow push it the other way. You, you can do some fancy things with it. This ability also drains the Etho Core faster than it normally would. So if, if you're draining, if you're losing one Etho Core per second, um, or two or etho core, per, you know, two energy per second, you would probably lose like four or five. So it's gonna it's, it's gonna drain a lot faster while you have this ability open. Now to get to the fun part, which is his ultimate, which is a two-parter. You have siege mode, and then you have the emergency ejection. So so now we'll get to the fun part here, which is his ultimate, which is a two-parter. His uh, the first part is called siege mode, and the second one is called emergency ejection. So Sam enters siege mode, channeling for three seconds before activating. Basically, he becomes a a giant artillery cannon, very similar to in StarCraft, how the siege tanks transform. That's kind of the idea I was going for. Uh, he has these, he has a very long-ranged cannon, 
which actually would be technically the longest, I would, I would make it the longest ranged ability in the game, minus global. So it would be a little bit longer than Jin's ultimate. Uh, each, each shell takes a certain amount of seconds to load, and then it takes a certain amount of seconds to land at its target location. The longer the skill shot, the longer it's going to take. So if you're at full range, it may take a second and a half to channel, but it may take four seconds for it to land. It's not gonna be instant. If you're closer, it's gonna happen a lot closer. Or it's gonna happen a lot quicker, I'm sorry. Uh, each shot will show the location of Sam on the minimap, so Fog of War will be deleted for like two seconds, it'll show where you are. But this, this ability does a lot of damage, like I'm saying a lot of damage. You can probably almost one or two shot somebody if you're, if you know, if you're building the right items. Um, although this ability is a very, very long ranged ability, um, it cannot attack champions who are close to Sam. So if you're within, if you're within like 150 range of Sam, he cannot attack you. This ability has some, some tax, you know, some tactical use to it. You need to be in a safe area to be able to use it. But if someone gets close to you, you're basically screwed because you can't really leave siege mode unless you're using the second part of it, which is the emergency ejection. Once your health drops below 20%, emergency ejection replaces the current siege mode ultimate launching Elerin through Sam's back. Emergency ejection is triggered. The ultimate goes on a longer cooldown. So if you actually use the siege mode and um, you, you know, you get to his, you know, you get to zero uh, energy, he actually will just leave the robot. He will not have to use the emergency ejection. But if you use the ejection, the ultimate's going to be a lot longer. So the ultimate would probably be around 200. I was thinking kind of a starting point, and then if you use this, it'd probably be like at 260. So it's gonna, so it's gonna add a, it's gonna add a whole nother minute of cooldown to this ability. I've, and I feel I feel that's a fair way of doing it. Kit wise, I, I didn't really make a uh, what items would be good for this because I wanted to, I wanted you guys to tell me. So he is a AP melee champion. I wanted to see what you guys would have to say about it. Kind of a summary of this champion. I feel like his he has a very very unique playstyle. And I said I said this about my other two champions, but I feel yet again I've made a champion that's completely different than what's in the game right now. He, this is the first champion that has kind of the human robot mechanic where you're playing a robot who can actually get into, I mean, you're playing a human who can actually get into a robot very similar to, I mean, D.Va and Overwatch or that sort of idea. High learning curve, um, I think a lot of people would be able to learn how to play him really well uh, or be able to play him on a consistent rate, but actually mastering him probably would take a long time, more than it would for a normal champion. Um, he has a very interesting two-way playstyle. So when you look at Elerin, he's more focused on kind of poking, uh, dealing damage, and then getting out. With Sam, you actually want to get up and close and personal with them and, you know, deal damage to them that way. So you actually have two big different playstyles that you have to learn how to play around or play with. However, the, the one, the, the bad things about this champion, I would say, balancing Sam's abilities and how the energy consumption works would probably be the biggest difficulty for Riot and the balancing team. Trying to make sure that you're not, you know, adding too much of an energy consumption to it. That way it seems like you're not able to use any of your abilities or that it's too low to where you can spam them all the time. That would, that would kind of be a fun thing. I would, I would like to know what you guys think would be some good positives and some negatives of this champion. And that's all I have for today on this video. Hopefully you guys like the concept. If you guys do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know what, what you guys think of the champion, like I said. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.